Good evening, good evening, good evening. We've got uh, no background today. I'm going to show some things today. We've got a whole bunch of stuff sitting around me. We're going to talk about the topic today. I know there's some folks in the house already. I'm trying to figure out where to put all this stuff for just a minute here. And I had a bunch of requests. I've been saying about the whatnot. I got a whole stack of records that are going up. They're not even all sitting next to me, but I'll give you an idea. I had probably about a half a dozen people in the last two days ask me. Auction Professor is my whatnot um, name. I'll throw some links maybe in another video or something. I'll do a preview, like a real good preview for anybody who's interested in seeing the records themselves. I'm not asking a lot. They're not trying to make a ton of money on them or anything else like that. So just FYI. I got a, a ton of stuff here. I don't know where to even start. <clears throat> Childhood toys. Uh, literally, that's a large chunk of everything that we make here. We make a ton of money off of childhood toys. Here's a purchase. This has been tested now, so I know it works, but $2 as is. It plugs in. It works. Everything's fine with it. We have a Nintendo here. I've got most game. I got at least one of most of the game systems. I even still have a Coleco Vision that still works here, but we test everything. I don't sell anything if I can't test it, at least video game wise. Um, $2. I don't know what it's worth. I haven't looked one of these up. Haven't had one of these in forever. I just got all new electronics and phones trying to upgrade everything. So my phone might make some weird noise. I'm not sure how to use it all yet. But um, anyway, this is the kind of stuff I snag when I'm out in public. This is the stuff that I do honestly run into. It's in there. I pulled it out before I even bought it. $2. I mean, I'm sure it's worth at least 30 I would imagine. Um, <clears throat> another item that I buy. Let's. Do I got the... Yeah, I've got green screen off. Yeah, we're going to talk records in a minute here. I'll show some records. But this is something I run into. Jeez, I must have six or eight of these here right now in-house. This one, is there a price still on it? I think it was 50 cents or a dollar, I think is what this one was. It's from 93. It's an original one. I get like 15 bucks or so out of almost every one of these I ever get, as long as it's in real good condition. Items that are found in uh, Amazon return pallets. You know, I've done a couple pallets, honestly. We'll talk about that. Remind me about that. We'll talk about that, too. Toys, action figures... Mark's toys are one of the top on my list because I remember these. I used to order them from the back of comic books and stuff like that when I was a kid. So all this stuff carries a value. Everything out there like this carries a value. These are from the 60s and 70s. Most every toy that I grew up on, even what my kids grew up on at this point, are collectible. Maybe they're all not worth a fortune. Maybe they're all not... Um, I think I have some more of these. Yeah, some Thundercats or something. Maybe they're not all from the real Ghostbusters or something. I think this one pops up or something. You know, I don't even remember how some of these work anymore. Somebody out there might know. I think he pops up. Oh, yeah, he's a little monster. So uh, this kind of stuff makes us a ton of money. Eight bucks a piece, yeah, it may not sound like a lot for just the common figures, but it's the ones that go for... 25 30 bucks you know a couple of these i pay 50 cents for i get eight bucks a piece for you sell them in lots they go really well cars of any kind i do phenomenally well with all of these sorts of things these are ones that are sitting in inventory waiting to list waiting to sell marks wise i've got a few more marks tanks not too long ago and i've probably got about eight marks tanks now these are like 40 bucks a piece. And again, this is stuff that I ordered myself out of the back of comic books and fanzines and stuff like that. All of that stuff is turned into a profit stream for us. It helps that I grew up on this. It helps that my kids grew up on this. So I know what they are. We bought some of the stuff from my, my kids' time frame from the late 90s and early 2000s. SpongeBob. I got a bunch of SpongeBob stuff that's worth money here metal figures and things like that game pieces and collectible cards ren and stimpy it's another one i've got trade cards and i don't think i've got those here but anything that came out when i was a kid is sitting around here now i'll tell you how long this piece has been sitting in inventory um i don't know if you're going to be able to see that 
This has a, a um, I think those are Saver stickers, but it might be Goodwill. But if you look at the date on it, I think I drop it down, it's from 2011. This is the original purchase price from 2011 on these. I've got a ton of inventory, to be honest with you. The stickers haven't even been removed from this. I've got boxes of this kind of stuff. So eventually we're gonna blow some out just because we wanna clear up some room. Um, we are going to be hopefully moving to a bigger place with a, a big facility, a big building, so I can do pallets. So we will talk about pallets at some point for sure, but <clears throat> anything from my youth, your youth, your grandparents' youth. Now this was a $5 um, and I actually didn't get it for that. But there's a Mark's dog in here that's worth about 15 on his own. He's right there. I don't know how well you can see it, but I've run into Lassie like this. So one little figure out of something like this makes me money. I split these up and I sell them by the company, whether they're Ren, Ren, uh, Renew, I think, or Renview, or whatever the company name was. And then uh, there's some Mark's in here. There's a couple Ideal. So stuff like this is all just junk to most people who don't remember these or haven't seen them before. Even like the action figures like this, to someone who doesn't know their toys, it's, it's just another action figure. It's, it's nothing special. Here's one that we used to buy for our kids too. I mess with all this stuff. I bought a whole bag. Well, I bought more than one, but I bought a bunch of bags for a dollar a piece. These are six or eight bucks a piece on these. These are from the 90s, 93 to 2004. These are all dated. I got a bunch of them. I bought the castle and the whole thing, the whole works. There's some horses. Here's a 93 one here. So this is all vintage. This is all childhood memories for somebody. And it's all worth something. The, the majority of, again, what I sell that's not like really old, like Victorian items, are old toys. Old, just junk that people had laying around the house <clears throat> we took our kids to see um, what's the name of the movie? Monsters Inc. My my oldest was out was really young when Monsters Inc. came out, like four or five. We bought him one of these. I knew instantly what it was, where it's from. They had it misidentified. This is one of those two dollar purchases. I think I've got shoes for it too. But um, this is a little girl from Monsters Inc. She talks. She still works. It's the original version that came out when the when the movie was out. We have the doors from um, uh, McDonald's or Burger King, whatever, all those those doors with the monsters. We bought a whole set of those for two bucks. They're McDonald's or whatever toys. But again, those are all from someone's childhood. Childhood memories. I mean, this is, this is the fun part of this. I get to look at stuff that I remember as a kid. So I, I usually have fond memories when I'm digging through toys or digging through stuff that I remember. <clears throat> Whether it's a collectible, like a, a lamp from the 60s or 70s that my mom used to have or something like that. All of that stuff, to me, is not just nostalgic, but it's it, it brings back a lot of memories besides just the nostalgia part. Because I grew up on all this stuff. <clears throat> now, what is this? This is something I honestly do remember these from, from the 90s and 80s and, and probably late, late 70s. It's just a, a pin something I paid a dollar for but it's fused glass it's like a robot face these are like 30 bucks I paid a dollar for it everybody else passed it by this was at a sale the last day and still sitting in there <clears throat> here's something else that I, I love I love jewelry and I looked at this really closely it's not marked so that's why I'm sure somebody everybody passed it up it wasn't marked but I looked at it closely it's all handmade I tested it it's sure, surely sterling. There's no doubt whatsoever. If you look closely, it actually looks like um, <clears throat> may have been a bullion coin, like a 999 bullion coin they used of some sort, because you can make out some writing. It's definitely not like coin silver, but anyway, this is one of those dollar purchases. Again, to me, this is childhood memories. We went out <clears throat> southwest when I was a kid. We traveled through Arizona. We did the old route uh, route 66 and we stopped at a lot of the places I, I remember stuff like this when I was a child so to me all of this is is stuff that I remember as a kid and all of it carries a value how do you know what <clears throat> everything's worth if you're you're just getting into this well you 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 
touch on what you know, what you remember from you. Hopefully you had a childhood where you had toys. I didn't have a lot of these toys or most of them, honestly, but I remember them. I always wanted them. My parents never had a lot of money. So for me, it was, it's more than just nostalgia. It's like reliving the childhood I never had to some extent. My parents didn't make a lot of money. So Let, let's show some records and then we'll, then we'll sit here and, and talk about stuff in just a minute here. One person's junk is another man's treasure. Very, very good. Power pads going for thirty-five to seventy. I, I literally paid that two-dollar price for it, and it works. So again, it just depends. I have the box for it, but <clears throat> for those music buffs, now these have all been cleaned. Everything you're seeing has already been cleaned. I, I paid some one of my employees cleaned them. All new sleeves. If they didn't have the original sleeve, this is an original. So all of them have uh, new sleeves if they're damaged. All of them are, are bagged. All of them are ready to go. All of them are playable. Um, Brownsville Station, if you don't know who that is. I'm sorry. I'm so upped on what's going on. <clears throat> I got a lot of jazz that are coming out. And if you know what label that is, and if you're even remotely... Yeah, I just killed my lighting. Hang on just a second. Let me see if we can't fix so I don't do that again. <clears throat> Blue Note, really good record. Um, not the best artist, but it's a really good record. Uh, Jimmy Smith... A lot of funk breaks and some of his earlier stuff, but I got a lot of blues. I got a lot of R&B that's coming up. These are all original pressings. I don't do any of the reshots. If there is a reshot or a, a import, they're all going to be stated. I'm not going to try and fool somebody. Everything in here, I'll tell you pretty much probably during the show that these are pickups. All these were hand-picked ones that I personally picked. Ten years after, I think some of you out there should know that. I think I saw Marty in the house. I think Marty should know, know these folks. Maybe Bob as well. I know I haven't called everybody out today. Sorry, I apologize. <clears throat> but we're going through some stuff today. Well, I think this is Santana, if I'm not mistaken. <clears throat> Some of you should recognize some of these records. Again, they're all in new sleeves. I've got some pricing. Um, I'm just going to throw them up for a low starting price. Five, seven, eight bucks or whatever. $30 records will be going out real easily. Um, some of these are pretty good. Beach Boys in Concert. Uh, this is a pretty nice gatefold original. I think it has the original inner sleeves too. Yep, it does. So it's got the original inners. I got some Beatles. There's a George Harrison I know in that lot. The box set is going to be uh, auctioned off. Again, I'll probably do them at least half or or less of what they start at and, and sell for on eBay. So you'll get a good deal. This is a 6i. I've got a bunch of Duke Ellington. If you like Duke Ellington, I got some real nice ones. This is, I think there's some promo 6i's in here too. Again, new sleeves, original first press 6i's. Um, again, I tried to get some better stuff, so those who love early records, more Duke Ellington. Again, I just threw some low starting ball prices. That's probably not what we're going to use. Again, all original 50s pressings, all originals, all 6i. I think you can see the 6i on there. If you don't know what 6i is, let's give you a little lesson on 6i. I think you're going to be able to see the 6i's on here. There's literally 6i's on the cover. Three on one side and three on the other. If it has the six side, nine out of nine times, it's going to be the first pressing of that record. I don't care what the music is. They only use those during a certain time frame. Here's a good one at Newport. Newport's a jazz festival, if you know anything about jazz. Let me show you the original. Again, all six eyes. These are all... Let's see how well you can see the... I think you can see it. Let me switch screens so I can see if you can... Hopefully you can see the quality of the records. I mean, you're going to get to see them up close at the, the auction. There's some damage on a few of them, but most of these are 70 years old. Um, now, this one's actually pretty good. I've listened to this one for Christmas before. I think they are all six eyes. Nope, this is a special collector's only. This is the mail away from their record club, if I remember right. Um, this is a pretty good one, too, at least music-wise. Look, if you can see the condition on the cover and the condition of the record, I mean, they're, they're top-notch records, most of them. Uh, I don't think anything that's going to be auctioned off is less than VG, mid-grade, or higher. Another Duke Ellington. Let's flip through the Duke Ellingtons really quickly. Uh, is this the... I've got a promo one. If you've never seen one, let me see if I've got the... No, yeah, I got one right here. 
<clears throat> promo, six eye, first press, uh, DJ record. And this is a decent record. Uh, I've played this one myself. I like jazz. I don't mind jazz. I took jazz history in college, but this is a promo. Yeah, it's got some wear to it, but it's still a nice record. I think you can kind of see. We're going to have lighting where you'll be able to see the grooves. You'll know what it looks like ahead of time. So for those diehard record buffs, I think we're going to run the auction on Tuesday, I think. It was hard to get the schedule in because of all the other stuff I got going on. I've been, I've had the account open and ready to roll for like two weeks, but unfortunately, um, I just had other stuff going on with employees and everything. I got multiples of some, so if you're looking for some multiples, I buy in quantity. Sometimes we buy 5,000 LPs at a time. The most I ever bought was maybe 15,000 LPs in one purchase. Uh, 45s, we've bought 15, 20,000 on occasion. Um, we're getting some better stuff now. Now, here's a Johnny Hodges. This is an original Verve. For those in the records, you know exactly what Verve is. Let me make sure I'm not killing my light every time I do this, but uh, there we are. <clears throat> 50s. I've got some 50s in there. Um, Price-wise, this won't be that much. I think we're going to put $20 starting price on this one. Um, again, all of them have the original sleeve or they've got a new sleeve. This one does have the original, I do believe. Oh, actually, it's a, it's a professional uh, replacement sleeve. Yeah, I'll have to work on the, the lighting real quick before we do it. That's Domino for those who like R&B, early rockers. That's Domino. You can't go wrong with that. Um, in fact, this has got every good one that you can imagine from Fats. <clears throat> I think most I'm in Love Again is one of my, my mom's favorites. But um, Fats, Fancy, Careless Love. My Blue Heaven is one of his better ones, too. Actually, I've got another one. This is an original Imperial, too, for those interested. <clears throat> Again, nice Latin soulish. I've got some earlier. This is a clef. <clears throat> I've got some sealed ones coming. If you like Zappa, I got a real nice sealed uh, Frank Zappa double record. I got some real nice funk in here too. So just FYI, <clears throat> Chris Connors, Herbie Mann. I think some of this. There's some autographs in here too. Now that I think about it. And I, these are all originals, all original first early pressing. So again, if you like music, this one I think will do really well. Really well in this one here. I wish the condition was a little better. This is like a mid-grade. Um, don't pay attention to that. That might even be old. But uh, Billie Holiday, can't go wrong with Billie Holiday. Now here's a neat one. This one has like doubled in price in the last, say, five or six years. Ray Charles. It's a gatefold. It's an original Impulse. Um, it's not one of the later ones. It's got the original Impulse 4 logoed image in the center. Nice one. <clears throat> Ella um, Fitzgerald and Louis Armstrong. This is the one you want. This is the Verve edition. I got some soundtracks in here, too. <clears throat> now, Bethlehem Records, hopefully those of you who are, are, aren't familiar at least know the record label. Bethlehem, you got Chris Connor, Julie London, Carmen McRae. Nice ones. Uh, vocal jazz, basically. This is a scarce one. Not worth a ton of money, but it's scarce. The jazz exponentials. <clears throat> yeah, some of these are... This is an Argo label, if you don't know Argo. Argo's not known for jazz, but it's an original. It's an early one. Argo had the Moonglows, which have some very expensive records um, by them. Pharaoh Sanders, not in the best condition the record sleeve itself, but I've played these discs. They do play fairly nicely. Uh, Youssef Latif, another excellent one here. Early funk, 70s. Um, Louis McCarrot, McCarrity Quintet. Now some of these, again, I think some of these are autographed. <clears throat> Here's spell, uh, Spellbinder. I've got a couple of them, too, so depending on your... Your, your level of collectability. In fact, let me move some of these off this. I think I've got too much on here. I think we're blocking out my light. I like this one. Dave Brubecker, you can't go wrong on that. If you like jazz and you just like stuff playing around the house, 
excellent. I, I hate to say it, but Dave Brubecker's Christmas album is one we play every year. It's a nice condition. It's an original. High Fidelity. Chet Baker. I think this is, what is this, Pacific Jazz. This is a decent label. I think I'm killing my, my lighting again here. <clears throat> okay, now here's a real rare one here. Walter Bishop Jr., and this is a promo. This is a promo. This is a scarce record in any condition. Um, uh, this one right now on eBay, you might see him running for about 70 to 125 right now, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, last time I looked, about a year and a half ago, these were going for around 40, 45, 50. So in a year and a half, this one has doubled at least. Um, Soul Turnarounds, I think, probably my favorite on there. Um, Soul Village is the title, the title soundtrack for this one. Promos are always worth more. This one literally was pulled out of a radio station by me. Um, I think all the promos in this lot I found at a radio station. The, the um, uh, shoot, what, which ones? Um, anyway, most of those, the Goodman and all those, most of those came from that record, uh, the uh, radio station's record room. Uh, they shut down. They went out of business. Um, it was one in Mississippi, honestly. Um, Charlie Bird, and this is uh, Bossa Nova. Well, it's more meditation soundtrack, but um, it's a nice one. I like Bossa Nova, so I don't know about everybody else, but I like listening to some of the Bossa Novas. Um, Elvis has one Bossa Nova, believe it or not. Um, this one's autographed. It's autographed on the back. Nothing spectacular. It's some oddball custom pressing, but, you know, stuff like that does sell. Uh, Gary Mulligan's songbook. This is Gary Mulligan in his uh, sax section. Excellent condition. This is an original stereo. K. Wining, J.J. Johnson. Everybody, well, I guess not everybody. I know this one. I know most of their uh, uh, records. I've played them just because I wanted to hear how they sounded. <clears throat> it's an early one here. Is this the right one? Yeah, this is it. Early Bethlehem. Nice one here. Here's a cool one, Otis Rush. Uh, my son claimed um, there was a Bo Diddley, a Funkadelic Bo Diddley on there. I wanted to put that one up, but my son claimed it. Anyway, let's get to Chad and Jeremy. This isn't even half. I think we've got 110 lots of records we've got going up. I think, as I said, I think we're going to do them Tuesday night. Um, I was told no one does them usually on Tuesday. I might be the only record guy on. <clears throat> this one's sealed. Never been opened. It is a cut corner. Cut corner means that at the time this was purchased, it was in the clearance section, is basically. So you couldn't return them. Sometimes there'll be a hole punch. So when you see this, it means, you know, back in the day when the person bought this or when it was sitting there, they couldn't return it for full price. Back when I was a kid, probably way before that, they would just have like a letter at the record stores around here. And whatever the letter was, you could look on the wall and it would tell you that that record would have an A, a B, or a C, or something, and that record was nine ninety nine if it was in this group or this letter, and that's how they priced them. But I've got a few sealed ones here too. <clears throat> what is this? Uh, Gary Rafferty or Jerry Rafferty? I'm sorry. This is sealed as well. Here's one that I, I've got a few soundtracks. Paradise Alley, Sylvester Stallone. This one's going up. Um, I think they run around fifteen or twenty. I think this one we're just going to start at seven bucks or five ninety nine, six ninety nine. So these will all be auctioned off. Here's a nice Henry Winkler, Sally Field. Again, sealed, never been opened. Nos. They're both. In fact, let's show you a different type of cut corner. So Sylvester Stallone. This is a mark down here. That little divot you see means it was marked down as well. Um, let me make sure I'm not going to mess with the feed but that's the same base it's a cut corner i always call them i don't know what the other name they call them maybe they just call them markdowns but this is going up to it's all there it's excellent condition it's an original apple if marty's still in house he probably recognizes that um, this one goes for some pretty good money uh, again it's it's all the original stuff on the inside let's grab you one of the records so you can see which version this is the apple tells you which version it is it is the orange apple. So there's a uh, green apple, a red apple. This is the orangish apple. There's one more. There's a black and white one for some of the promos. There's probably like five different apples. I 
don't want to hurt the hinge on this, but anyway, that's going to be up in there too. I'll have some surprises. Um, I've got Blind Faith. Now this isn't a record. Let me move these up here. Pardon me. Yeah, but this is a book from one of their tours. Um, this sells for some pretty good money. I think I've shown this before. I've had three of these. This is my third one, and this is probably the nicest one. I thought it was a record. I bought it with a bunch of records, in all honesty. So it's like the whole book. Look up Blind Faith if you don't know who Blind Faith is. I've got their band pulled cover sitting down here. I was afraid to sell it. Um, anybody who knows Blind Faith knows exactly which one I'm talking about. Um, anyway, it's it's the original. It's like the tour book from one of their live concerts. I think it's from 67. Uh, again, it's it's a book, but it came with a bunch of records. I paid a dollar for it, too, so I was fairly happy. Uh, that's just a small assortment of what we're going to be auctioning. My youngest son's going to be on there with me, too. We've already run a test one. Again, it's Auction Professor. I'll have links and all that kind of stuff up, too. Um, I think they gave me a bunch of like um, affiliate links and stuff, but I haven't put any of those or messed with those as of yet. So uh, anyway, I've got the page already open. My account's open. We've talked to them a couple of times. And anyway, that's what we're going to do next week. I think, as I said, Monday or Tuesday, I think is what we said, Tuesday. So anyway, if for those that were interested, there's just a touch on the records. You can see they're all in pretty darn good condition. Uh, I will have a video preview, a quick 30 second one intro for it as well too so look for that if you want to make sure you're in the right one again it's auction professor on whatnot <clears throat> i'm sitting here playing with toys if you want to know what i'm really doing <clears throat> I, I love the toys and toys in general make us a lot of money i was going to pull out boxes of stuff but i've got so much stuff in here right now that it would be uh almost impossible to get around let me uh pop back over here and see where we're at <clears throat> Marty, I got Charles Lowe, Bob, Auction Monkey, welcome, welcome. Uh, has eBay sales been unusually so for everyone? Mine are awful. <clears throat> I wouldn't say... It depends on, I guess, what you sell. It depends on your quantity up. Uh, for those in Patreon, I got a video coming out tomorrow, and then I got another one that, in fact, you might have two videos tomorrow. Uh, I'm processing one right this minute. Um, part of the new hardware we installed, I've got more space to process more videos, so things won't be waiting on one to process and stuff. I've got a industrial, uh, professional quality uh, editor now, so anyway... <clears throat> That's what I, I was working on today. Anyway, so there might be two videos up tomorrow. We're going to address some of the sales issues in another video for YouTube as well. Uh, I've had a ton of people ask me on the view counts, to, the change that they did, and what's happened since then, and a bunch of other things in, involving that. And so I wanted to address some of those specifically, and we'll touch on those, as I said, in a specific video. I'll probably put it up tomorrow, but... <clears throat> for some of the screenshots that have been shared, some of the, the drops, some of the information on the, the lack of views, the lack of sales, for a large, large, large chunk of people, it, it does make me wonder what possibly uh, has been done. But if they got rid of views, they, they removed all of the... We'll just, I'll just shoot this out there. In my opinion, they've got rid of views. They didn't update their the criteria that they use for search results. So since you're getting less views, again, my opinion, <clears throat> I don't think the, that their search logarithm is caught up with the fact that they changed how the views are done. That's my opinion. And if it means that they don't show all the extra views that you had before because they were fraudulent or just um, robotic clicks, whatever you want to call them, um, it's now showing that you have less action on those items, so they may not show them as much is my, my concern. I don't know if that's the case, but that makes perfect sense because eBay does one thing and they never check it out. So <clears throat> that's my take on it. I think that's what's going on, in my opinion. The best thing, <clears throat> excuse me, I've been talking all day to people, but the best thing that we've found that still works is end and sell similar, run, run a discount right after that, and send out a massive amount of offers to watchers. I think today alone I sent out 187 offers to watchers. I don't look at my views. I don't care. I, I, I never look at how many views I get. I, I have no idea how many views I have on anything. And I don't e honestly even look at watcher count 
pretty much at all unless I'm able to send an a, offer to a watcher because it means nothing. Maybe the price is off. People say that. Well, that, if you have a bunch of watchers, no one's bidding on it. <clears throat> maybe it it you have it too high priced, or maybe you know stuff like that. I, I just think with the amount of people that may be watching my items, that's not an accurate assumption anymore, because I've looked at it. I've looked at what other people do and and stuff with a bunch of watchers on one item versus none on another one and stuff and. <clears throat> The sales, from what I see, what what goes on, I don't think that's that's the issue for the most part. I literally think it's due to, to eBay's logarithm with showing search results. That's my personal opinion on the whole aspect of why sales have been having issues left and right with stuff like that. That's just my opinion. <clears throat> <clears throat> Matt, Jake, uh, Mr. Rock, Record Crate, how y'all doing? Generic Eric. Larry, way out one. Welcome, welcome. Stardust Memories. Been a while, but I'm finally able to watch live. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome back. Sherry Brown, how are you doing? <clears throat> Michael Solier, the professor. I've been killing it lately. Thanks for your help. <clears throat> I'm doing just fine for the amount of effort I'm putting in. I don't have any complaints on, on sales at this point right now. I could always uh, do with more sales, though, so... With with great reluctance, we've we were gonna try another platform, uh, as I said, the the whatnot and stuff, and that's about you know <clears throat> the only other thing we're gonna take on at this point. We're still working on our own. We're still trying to get the SKU situation situated so we can cross without having to worry about end and sell similar hurting anything. Um, you know, I, I've reached out to to a platform too that I've dealt with for a while and suggested maybe them syncing with skews and things like that too so wh who knows we'll see what happens uh once it, it gets around and as it has done um i think we'll see some stuff going on i i think there'll there'll be some new stuff ebay is talking about from what i've read and in, in some posts on, on blog posts <clears throat> ebay is you know they're going to put video uh, capability for everyone they may go back to the quick live auctions, maybe. That might be something we might see, kind of like whatnot. Now, whatnot, I've dug into this for quite some time. I've spent quite some time digging into it. I've watched. I've you know, looked at a bunch of stuff. I've taken their recommendations. I've you know, talked to them. Whatnot is like a copy off of a Japanese and a Chinese site. One of the biggest, fastest-growing sites or, or types of sites or apps, I should say, in Japan, China, Asia in general have been quick 31 minute auctions that run live. And I think, you know, at this point after digging in and checking the numbers over there, I don't know, maybe whatnot won't go anywhere. Maybe they will, who knows? But uh, again, I'm just going to give it a try. I've got too many things sitting around here. We need to move a lot of merchandise record wise. I've had a lot of people reach out and I don't want. A lot of people get mad if they find out I sold to this person or that person or if they didn't get the same opportunity maybe or they didn't get the record they wanted I don't know there's just been so many um, people that have been uh, bothered by um, <clears throat> me going to offer stuff to people and groups and so I'm just gonna just gonna list it up cheap dirt cheap on on, um, uh, on whatnot and see what happens I don't know how else to do it fairly that way anybody got, has the opportunity I'm not gonna be trying to skank somebody here and get a whole bunch of money off of everything yeah, I think everybody out there knows I'm not trying to market my, my, my stuff. Record, I've had so many people ask me that due to the quantity I have in-house, we are going to, as you see, sell a bunch. I've got, geez, a lot of auctions worth of records to, to auction off. So, <clears throat> And i got a lot of other stuff we'll probably auction off some. I'll do some bulk postcard lots, um, bulk paper lots. I've got 125 pounds of... Victorian scrap. I may offer, you know, a pound lots or something like that, reasonably priced, and go from there. Um, anyway, again, I'm not rushing on the whatnot. They told me for the first month I'd have, you know, a reduced or no uh, final value fee, I guess, but I, I've wasted the first 12 days already, so I'm not rushing. Vintage Kenner toys. Yes, vintage Kenner toys do, uh, do sell very well. Um,. Hollywood reseller, what are your thoughts on reselling items that are found in Amazon return pallets? To be honest with that, 
it depends on who you're buying from. You're not ever going to buy a pallet straight from Amazon unless you've got some big hookup. I know one person who's been doing it for like, eh, I don't know, 12 years, pallet buying, who has finally a hookup after in the last two years with, with Amazon. If you don't get them from the right person with Amazon, you might not get a bunch of good stuff. You know, and I've seen um, what comes out of some of the Amazons in person. I don't know. you got to watch it because everybody's thinking they're going to make a fortune and you'll get something and your top dollar items out of there could be broken, missing pieces, may not work. I know maybe 40, 50% of your stuff's going to be just fine and easily going to be able to sell. But again, it just depends on the condition of any given item. We, we um, do Kohl's for our returns from Amazon. And what Kohl's does is they bag them all up. And I think even the Kohl's stuff turns into pallets at the end of the day because I've seen how they, they box it up. I was just there today dropping off a dog food bowl for Jack, our new dog. Didn't quite do with what we needed. And they had just a big pallet sitting in the back, basically, there, loading up. There was a line. There was more of a line to return Amazon returns. I'm playing with toys again, sorry. There was more of a line to return Amazon stuff than there was at their registers at the front. So, I mean, I don't know if that's good or bad, but the, the return rate for Amazon or Internet purchases in general is like 30-some-odd percent. Maybe it's higher than that, but it's, it's really high. It's the highest it's ever been in, in world history, the amount of returns for online items bought NOS, new from Amazon and stuff. So, you know, they do Kohl's, Whole Foods now, and I think they've got a third option, too. You can drop it off at UPS or something, I think, if you're doing Amazon returns. So, um, thanks, Marty there. Jiminy Flippit, another fellow YouTuber. Good friend of the channel, longtime friend of the channel. Duke Royal, how are you doing? Sherry Brown, Power Pads, thank you. This is Breaks. Is that Disney coloring book? Um, I don't think I got any coloring books anywhere around. Um, hang on, where are we at here? Phil Spaseo, if you're selling at a loss, how would you write it off in taxes? If you sold over $600 in personal losses, do you still need to fill out a W? you got to fill out all legal documents. If you're selling at a loss, what... Now, I'm not an accountant. Let me just tell you real quick the basics on that. Let's say you're going to use stuff around your house to, to start selling on eBay. That can be considered part of your startup cost. So basically, you would have to come up with a, a reasonable value based on their age and all that kind of stuff. You, you can't prove what you paid for them. You can come up with a reasonable value, what you feel they are honestly and sincerely worth based on, on your, your... Again, if you report that you... You, you've got $100 into them and you only sell them for $100, you're not making anything. You're just getting your money back out. You won't pay taxes on them, but you still have to report that if your intention was to make a profit. You know, If you're just turning them over, though, you can just declare a value on it, You know, 30% of face value or whatever because it's been in your possession for five years or whatever the case may be. You use that as a write-off. That's part of, part of your, your cost of doing business. And then any profits over that, you know, you'd be able to weigh it out. If you're not making a profit overall, you have nothing to worry about either way. Uh, but that's the, the basis on, on after I talk to an accountant and, and a lawyer on what I do with that stuff. I used it as a startup cost. We just pretty much rolled over a ton of our own personal stuff into, you know, um, a reasonable cost. And that was startup cost. Thousands of dollars worth of stuff, but... You know, we ended up making a profit off of it at the end of the day, and then it was de declared personal property. Even if you make a, uh, even if it's personal property, if you're making a profit, and this is your business, you've got to declare it. So I personally would write off anything that, not write it off per se, but declare it as startup cost. Sell, sell it from yourself, your personal belongings, to company belongings. Once you do that, though, it's not yours anymore. You can't just say, well, I changed my mind. Once you've turned it over to business use, you move it from your personal property area of, of wherever you're working to your business area. And from that point on, if the business goes under, that stuff goes with it. I guess that's the gist on it. That's a, a quick breakdown on the, the the breakdown on what you do with that. Just just FYI. Uh, old toys, Jane Lord, yes, old toys. I've always made a fortune off of old toys. 
Um, I love old toys. I've got some that I'm keeping um, just because they were boxed or mint on the card. Mostly Micronauts and Microman, Takara items, early Takara. If you haven't hit the thumbs up, please slam that thumbs up button. I know I didn't post this until the very last minute, so probably didn't get many uh, people realizing that the show was running today. I think I posted it like eight minutes before the show was supposed to start. Again, we've been, I've updated everything. We just finished this morning, well, late, late this morning. So from Sunday night, I was upgrading everything. And I'm, we're talking a bank of laptops and our server, the, the, everything in the, the building. And then plus another building's worth of updates. Phone was updated. Everything synced. Um, yes, thanks, Jane Lord. Yes, please, again, hit the like button if you haven't. Uh, Southern Mermaid. I love selling old toys. Old toys is the key for me. Um, I don't. I'm not a big fan on the newer toys. They're more mass produced, or they're they they call them limited just to get more money out of them and all this. I'm not a big fan of all that stuff. Truthfully, I like the old toys. I don't care if they're sealed in a package. The wife collects weebles, and again, we are working diligently in the background. Uh, this week I had to dedicate most of the time to upgrading everything here. Um, <clears throat> we've we've been working on animation for a very long time and I needed something else to process quicker than we were. Let me show you something else I just got in today. This is 1870s or 80s. Very nice piece here though. It's a Christmas booklet of Punch and Judy. 1880s. Marcus Ward, very well-known company. Um, it's a nice piece, uh, probably a $75 piece. I got like two bucks into it, but no one knows their stuff, I guess, around here lately, so I've been doing very good on buying the stuff. <clears throat> Let me move some of this stuff out of the way. Let me pop back over again. Uh, just, a, just got a couple cases of 90 Star Trek. Stardust Memories. I like Star Trek, don't get me wrong. Um, I don't mess with most of the newer stuff. I think the 90s, the Impel 90s, are the newest Star Trek that I mess with. Um, I've got a couple Deep Space Nine limited 1,000 uh, run sets, box sets. I've got a bunch of stuff like that. I do have Star Trek IV uh, trade cards. I think I've got Star Trek V. I've got Search for Spock. Now, those are by uh, another company. I've got the Leaf 76 Star Trek. Yeah, I'm sorry, 67 Star Trek, and then I've got the, the Tops uh, 76 Star Trek, or 77, I think. One of the two. Uh, just got a couple where we at. Jane Lord, I used to have those same dollhouse furniture since any picker has the house they go to for sale. I've got a house for those right here right now, too. It's In fact, I've got two houses. I've got Lazy Acres, the Tin Barn with the silo, all marks, and then I've got um, two different houses I've got the long single story, and then I've got a two story house, and I've got one more Mark's house. Is it a house? Maybe it's the Fort Apache Fort set. I know I still have the the castle. I've got King Arthur's castle too, or the medieval knight's castle from the the box set. Um, yeah, one person's junk is another man's treasure. Definitely. Hey Joe, how are you doing? Smart. Good evening. Good afternoon. I guess on your end. Good to see you in-house. Uh, again, there will be a Patreon video up tomorrow. It should be up fairly early. Um, I'm up at 5 tomorrow. I've got to do a run somewhere, and I'll be home by like 7 at the latest. So it will be up after I get home at 7. I'm going to try and get to everybody's email. I don't know if I will, though, tonight for Patreon. i got a lot of emails in there. Uh, again, this week I've had computers down all over so we could update and install more memory and... I had to swap out some hard drives this week. I do all that with one of my kid, with my oldest, so um, it takes a little more time for us to do it. Um, Biff, both. Oh well, once we get to the point where we remember vintage things from our youth, we ourselves have become vintage. Yes, yes, I would agree with that. Yeah, I look at when when people are born these days, um, especially with like my kids and stuff, and you know, it's hard to even imagine, you know from when I was born. I was born, I won't tell you when I was born, never mind. Fart Sack Jack, yo, yo, yo. Doing good, doing good. Blue Note, yes, Blue Note is one of the best labels for jazz. There are some Blue Note jazz that go for like, I don't know, a couple thousand bucks. Um, <clears throat> early Bix like Wolverton Orchestra are like some of the most expensive records on like, um, 
like um, on uh, Pop Psych, Digital Underground, uh, not Digital Underground, what is that? Nico and um, the Warhawk cover with the banana. I can't think what it is. Uh, too much stuff running through my head today, I guess. Record credit. I sell tons of Blue Note. See, I haven't had a good Blue Note in a while here. Now, we, we were lucky, I think, three times in my career of doing records. I walked up on just the, the, the king of all Blue Note purchases, like 150, 200 nice Blue Notes. Um, yeah, I even do well with some of the Blue Note 78s. Even the 12-inch 78 Blue Notes do okay for us. So I do love Blue Note. This, the brakes. Uh, my person like to have the sleeve even if damaged. Jimmy Smith is gold. Yes, I do. I like, I see, I like brakes. I like the brakes. Um, who, what, well, how to describe brakes to people that don't know what brakes, they're drum brakes. Um, the song Sweet Pea by Tommy Rowe. Listen to the song because there's some brakes in there where he stops and right when it goes silent, those are all breaks right around that, before and after the little breaks he has in the silence. But that's that's what's called breaks. I like bre the breaks. I love that. I've got some um, I've got some um, dub in there too. There's some uh, hot uh, Jamaican 12-inch uh, singles in there. Uh, so there's there's stuff like that in there. There's some oddball stuff like that. Um. I'd love to change the world. Yes, that's a good song too. Definitely so. Alvin Lee, yep. Uh, the this some of those. I think the uh, Santana does have the shrink wrap on it still. Um, as it, some of those were sealed, as you saw, there's like I don't know half a dozen sealed ones in there. At a future one, I've got some autographs like Tammy Wynette. Um, a bunch of country there. I think there's 30 or 40 all, all autographed. These all came from a record. Um, they're not a record from a radio station. I pulled them out myself and the, the, the person I bought them from was one of the guys who worked there. And he said those were all signed at the studio, the, the radio station itself and the studio to one of the DJs there. And they're not allowed to take them home where this place was at. So they all sat on a wall in there. I took them all off. I took all the ones that were out. I got them myself, so I, I believe the story is correct. I've looked at them very closely. Um, like J James Dean, Jimmy Dean, not James Dean, but Jimmy Dean's in there. Um, stuff like that. They're all autographed, though. There's a bunch of them. Um, uh, Narvel Feltz, I think, is in there, too. Uh, stuff like that. Oddball. Some of them have some country boppers. Some of them have some rockabilly classics. Uh, I got 45s too, which we'll probably do at some other point, but I've got a lot of records. A lot of records. Um, Hollywood reseller, how do you know which records to stay away from? Um, 30 plus years. I've been buying records since I was like. Jeez. My first record was. Um, Oh, geez. Uh, Little Creatures by the Talking Heads. And that has Stay Up Late, Road to Nowhere, um, and She Was. I think those are the three that everybody should know. Um, but that was my first record. I think that was in like 84. Um, <clears throat> ever since then, I've been into records. Ever since then. I grew up. I, I have record players. There's two within visual sight of me right now. Um, you you got to know... There's there's no way to give you a book. The book would be like this thick if I gave a book on specifics. 78's a different story. I've been working on a, a, a guide to 78's, a picker's guide for a very long time. One day and hopefully within the next year it'll be done because I have somebody who will publish it if I can get the images. I, the problem is legal legal aspect with photos. That's my biggest problem is photo. If, you, if I don't own the item, it's hard to get permission from somebody to use their photos because they've already had them in a book or in, they've got their buddies. It's a big click. The, the high-enders or the ones that are already published are in like a click, and they don't talk to anybody, and they won't even respond, half of them. But anyway, records are really hard to tell you. It, it's not quite as hard as postage stamps but i think postage stamps are probably the hardest to learn if you don't you don't know anything about postage stamps that'll get somebody frustrated quicker than anything i know i've sat down with people in person and i've sat down with the book i've sat down with versions and varieties and stuff on stamps 
earlier stamps and man just just trying to get them to understand again no disrespect to anybody because maybe the person's there's quite a few people i've tried to try to personally talk to but just the, the the versions of a stamp and watermarks and the color alone just uh, i have a color you have to have a color chart for postage stamps for an example and there's like 25 or 30 different versions of red vermilion and all that and they look very close and unless you have a chart or understand even just the perforations on a stamp can be there could be 15 different types of perforations on on some stamps somebody could have even re-perforated a sheet because they could be worth more there are people do that they'll re-perforate by hand uh, a stamp because they can change the value on a stamp with a different perforation some of them will cut it square and then reperf it so the stamp of it has wide borders on it. They can fool you. If you don't know your stamps, you don't know the correct size, you, don't, you, you can't tell if... There's a lot to learn. And the records are, are not quite that bad, but it's, it's very hard to tell on records. To be honest with you, the records that are worth the most money... I've got dogs in here. I'm sorry I keep touching. I've got a hair somewhere. But the records that I make the most money on are 45s. I make the most money on 45s, and then the second that I make the most money on would be 78s. LPs in general, I'm lucky to get a three or four hundred dollar LP these days. Um, 200s not too hard, but I'm lucky to get a four hundred dollar LP. A five hundred dollar one's extremely scarce, and if I'm lucky, maybe once a month I get one that high. An LP, a 45, a different story. Uh, three hundred dollar forty five is not that hard to get only because of quantity that we can I can go through the more you can go through the better you do everybody around here where I live thinks that I'm sure there's some locals that are watching but thinks that um, it's the LPs it's the old rock LPs yeah don't old rock LPs sell and they sell fairly quickly but they're not super high price unless you're getting like a first pressing like if you want a first press of of Pink Floyd, you most of the time you're going to want a UK version of it. You know, an early David Bowie. You're going to want a UK version of it. Moody Blues, you're going to want a UK version of it. That's where they came out first. You know, I think I've got some Vertigo and some other uh, foreign pressed ones in there too. I know I've got like a Deep Purple um, and some stuff like that in there too. That's uh, German pressings. There's a couple Vertigos, original Vertigos too. I'm sure Crate, Crate Picker, there's a few folks, uh, a record Crate will know uh, when I'm talking about Vertigos. Um, Fart Sack Jack, yeah, they're all pretty clean. You know, there's a goodwill here that I'm able to sometimes pick out some decent ones, but if there's only one. I'm, I'll take that, it's a Salvation Army, I'm sorry, it's a Salvation Army, but it's like a 40 minute drive from, from my house. Um, but they have 78s there, and they never go through those. Sometimes they pull the records. I'm sure they auction them here, or one of the local record stores already beats me to the punch or knows them or something from what that sounds like. Biff, uh, Bofo, yeah, if you're not a record collector, you're never... I wouldn't say if you're not a record collector per se, but it's taken me... 30 plus years, 33, 34 years of buying records to, to be pretty good at it. I mean, I can, 45s, I'm the best. 78s, I'm the best at too. LPs, I'm not as good. Only because I don't always remember the, the matrix, to know which one's which. Um, if, if I'm messing with records, usually I'm not their first. LPs, I should say. And the LP guys usually uh, snake me out and all the rock and stuff before I get there. So... I'm usually left with lounge uh, or um, living presence or um, uh, red seal um, original first pressings. Um, I'm sorry, red seal uh, uh, RCA red seals with uh, the shaded dog or living presence, which are mercury uh, label living presence um, classicals. And I've made I've made as much off of those classical LPs as most people make off the rock ones. And, and one other thing I should say, too, if you're going to look at records and they just say classical, always call and check what they mean by classical. The last lot, and this wasn't too long ago, of classicals, and I, I go look at classicals, so I always look. But most everybody else around here left an art, a, a post on Craigslist sit for days without calling because the guy wrote classical. But what he meant by classical was classic rock. And his, his post on Craigslist didn't say classical rock, it just said classical LPs. And sure enough, 
they were classic rock and I scored out hundreds of classic rock LPs for almost nothing because he was he was getting discouraged. He was about ready to dump them because no one had called. It had been up for a little while and he was surprised, but he didn't put classic rock. So if you ever see classical records for sale, always ask what they mean by classical. I buy classical again. It's the reason I always am fine with classical as well too. So like uh, if you'd mess with real to real, classic rock is obviously the is probably right up there, but um, classical, uh, you know, symphony and orchestra, all that stuff is is the bomb too. I make real good money off of real to reels on classical and jazz. Phenomenal money. I mean, just phenomenal. And usually I I get about the same for classical, uh, you know, regular classical versus rock. I can get pretty close, unless to say I've got some really scarce. You know, like a Pink Floyd double album, so The Wall on Reel to Reel would be worth hundreds, you know, something like that. There's no there's no real way to tell somebody on records. I've been just buying them and selling them for 30 plus years. Um, I, I, I wish there was a shortcut. There's no shortcut. You're just going to have to learn and buy and sell and look up everything. I, I, I used to look up everything. Every record before I bought it, I looked it up. I wanted to know if it was a dollar, and I did that before I bought it. I did it in a store. So my wife always used to hate going shopping at the thrift stores back in those days because I had to look them up when we first, I'm talking 20 years ago, but these days I just flip through them. You know, it's very easy, very quick. You don't find a ton at thrift stores, though, um, as one person said. I find more at the junk flea markets around here, 78s mostly, or 45s. And again, the LPs, everybody grabs them and sells them. 45s, there's some secrets to it that I still still can do very good on, but I know we're wasting a lot of time talking about the same topic. But I love records. I can't, can't beat that. Stardust Memories. Yeah, Herb Albert Whipped Cream. Somebody that, one of my pickers knew somebody who bought, bought every, he had like 80 of those records. I have no idea why, but he had like, he bought every one that my picker ran across. I mean, they were dollar records. I don't know what he's doing. He's got like 80 of those things. That exact same Herb Albert with the whipped cream. You know what? Maybe there's something going on. I don't know. Um, Marty Dunn, do you happen to have Sinatra Live at the San 66 Mono Press? I have probably 20 or 30 uh, that I know of, in, not too buried of Sinatra. I don't think I have... I don't know if it would be the 66. I might have at the Sands, but I don't think it's going to be a 66 mono. That sounds to me like it'd be a fairly scarce one. I like Sinatra. Von Ryan's Express, we were talking about movies last week. That just always happened to be one of my, my favorite movies, and he's the lead. He plays Ryan. He's Von Ryan. He's, not, he's, he's a U.S. pilot is what he is in the movie, but that was my first touch on who Sinatra was when I was a kid. I probably watched that movie when I was eight or nine with my father. No idea who he was, but ever since then I I sought him out because I, I loved the part. I loved that movie. I took I was I took German because of stuff like that, and my grandmother spoke it and stuff when I was a kid. So I took German in high school for four years because of stuff like that. And um, where are we at? Where are we at? When will these be listed? Yeah, they're going to be on. Um, they're going to be on a live auction on whatnot. All those records, and it'll be Tuesday. I think is the date we decided. And I'll post everything ahead of time. Tomorrow it will be posted live. So tomorrow on whatnot under the auction, professor. I'll try and remember to get some links. I'm terrible on promoting stuff, but um, it'll be auctioned off on there. I'm going to actually put in the titles of all those, or have one of the kids put them in here. So there'll be no question on what's going up. And there'll be a, a quick little intro. It'll all be done tomorrow, I promise. That's going to be up for sure because I need to have the date on my calendar for labor-wise. I need to make sure I don't have a bunch of other stuff going on at the same time or running it is my biggest concern here. Um... Alberto, yeah, those records, I've listened to pretty much all of those. Maybe not that same copy, those same copies, but I've listened to all of those. Um, we're going to be listening to it, and I've asked, I was told that I can play those as long as it's not, I'm not making money off the stream itself, um, whatnot, the, whoever he was, um, head of a department or something. You, you, They want you to play music, so we're playing those. I've got my turntable sitting here uh, all cleaned up and ready to go. I put a new needle on it. We're going to play some of those records 
Um, so if there's like maybe the the soulful one there, maybe we'll play that one, the promo version. Um, Walking to New Orleans, yeah, that's a good one too. My father-in-law, no, I, very good one too. What grade is mid-grade? Like a VG? That's what I would consider mid-grade, VG area. I don't know where you'd consider it, but I, I get real good feedback on my grading on record, so I'm usually undergrade something. If I think it's a VG+, plus, I'd probably do a, like a standard flat VG if it was me. Usually use Goldmine for um, LPs and 45s. I do not use, I use Vintage Jazz Mart for VJM for 78s, though. Uh, even 50 78s. It's just me. Uh, the, the the people that I sell 78s to are only going to be mostly using the VJM standard. So if you don't know what that is, that's the, the other grading system that's out there for records. Gold mine is the gold standard, I guess. Yeah, it's a lot of the, the Bethlehem maybe, but I think those are all early enough that they should, should technically be the original vinyl version um, there's like a, a whole bunch on what's it Rose I think is the label there's a bunch of 45s that are styrene too and there's only a couple ways for a uh, non pro to know but you, most of them are I, I like Osborne's book better than Goldmine honestly but um, I think Osborne's newest one has the the designations for most of the styrene ones at least listed uh, I got some Julie London listed uh, Calendar Girl, I think, is the one that's the most expensive by Julie London, if I'm not mistaken. And if I'm not mistaken, that one has a gatefold, the original first press, and it has an insert poster, 12 by 12, of her. And then it has all the calendar um, uh, cheesecake, uh, beefcake, whatever you wanted it to, to call them, all on the inside of it, too. I've had that one a couple of times. In fact, I may have a copy of that one still here. Eric Hughes, how are you doing? Good evening, good evening. Any Ravi? I don't think so. At least not in here. I've got like hundreds of thousands of records, to be honest with you. Calendar Girl, there's somebody talking about it right there. Yes, that's the one that I, I know I've got one around here. I couldn't say if it flips, it ships. That one I couldn't say. Yeah, I've got Chet Atkins. I've got... In fact, I just... I might even have it right here, honestly. Uh, just for those who might like stuff like that. I'm going to sell a few lots that might just be surprise lots, but I think there might be one in here. Some of them are damaged. That's unfortunately because the record looks really fine, but these are going to go in a lot. So, you know, Poison the Attic, everybody should know that one. Uh, again, some of these, this one might be the Vertigo, is it? They're all first pressings. Let me just show you what's sad about some of these. Some of these have the damage on them, but the records. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see that record, but man, the records are really nice. It's the only reason I saved these. I was gonna, I'm not going to sell them separately just because of the condition of the record, but I don't want somebody to feel taken. I don't. I want everybody to be happy with what they got. I'm not trying to rip anybody off. So um, I thought it was right here, but it's not. There's a decent one. I think I have every or almost every Black Sabbath uh, or Ozzy, early Ozzy's that there are. Shot in the Dark, Bark at the Moon, all those. Ultimate Sin. Um, I was a big, big, uh, big, uh, hang on, my things just flipped out on this end. Hang on, okay, I'm back, I'm sorry. Played Dixie on 70s Emergency. Are you talking about the Emergency TV series? Record shops would get promos as well. Yeah, some record shops got them. That is that is definitely true, uh, City Picker, because they would play them in the record store in the background like they still do. They're the, one of the record shops here still gets them because they sell new records. And I know he got one from Third Man Records from Jack Black, or not Jack Black, Jack White from the Detroit place that they had. I don't know if the Detroit one's still open, but... One of these days I need to get out there. Stardust Memories. White Label, it depends on the, the record. You know, some of them you're not going to sell for more than the regular one because people just don't care. It depends on, on the record itself, too, I, I guess, the kind of music. I have a promo Chet Atkins 
Um, I want to say it's how to play the guitar. I know I've got Adventures in the slot here, uh, Adventures disc, and they're still uh, some of them are being cleaned still, so I don't have that one handy. But I've got how to play the guitar by the Ventures, and it's a gatefold. It's got the little booklet with it and the whole works. Uh, Marty might think that one's interesting, as a guitar player himself. Uh, let's hear my way. Uh, where are we at? Otis, yes, you can't go wrong with Otis. Otis Rush. Oh, let's see here. Jim, and he does his shows Tuesday night. Oh, do you? I see. I'm bad on stuff like that. I'll have to I'll have to look and see what else is going on on Tuesday. I can do it Tuesday or Wednesday, just FYI. Yeah, Zappa. I was going to repeat some, uh, repeat some lyrics, but I, I don't think I should do that. Um, some Zappa lyrics, but anyway. Um, you have to set up the shipping yourself, from what I understand on there. I haven't set that up yet, on all honesty. Um, but I will have it all set up. Um, it's a dollar extra for each record after the first one. I'm going to, uh, hopefully we're able to do media mail. Somebody told me that media wasn't an option through them. I don't know. I'll have to look into that. Um, uh, hang on just a second. Green Apple. Great album to hang on the bathroom wall. Depends on which one we're talking about. Those are uh, those are not stickers. They're um, uh, posty notes. I posty note everything, and they're actually on the outside on the brand new um, protective two mil sleeve for them. Uh, more glitches and yeah, I don't even want to talk about the glitches on eBay. We we this week luckily I haven't had to touch eBay too much. We've been upgrading hardware more than anything else. Yeah, Biff. There's Biff saying, uh, "Whatnot needs to get some kind of media mail arrangement." There is all they need to do is hook up with Pirate Ship in my book, and they'd be good to go. Um, yeah, that's what, exactly what I thought. They did not have a media mail, so it's probably going to be the first one. I sh I can ship an LP safely. I think for first class, I think 16 ounces. I think was the last. One. I'll have to look again. I'm pretty sure I can safely ship one for under a, under a pound. Um, I have never seen so many garage sales in my life. I haven't been sourcing in six months. Why buy it if it won't sell? Um, I don't go to garage sales anyway, honestly, anymore these days. I haven't went to a garage sale in a while, other than just maybe fun or it was local. Um, I don't garage sales around here. I never was able to make a ton of money, so I, I'm not a big garage sale person. But stuff is selling if you've got the right stuff, I should say. Collectibles, vintage toys are always hot. Anytime, day or night, I don't have any problems. Marks, anything marks. Christmas stuff like the Punch and Judy I showed you just a little while ago, the Victorian era one. Yeah, Marty, I think that is it. I don't think anybody is actually seeing them. And I think eBay has missed that. I think eBay changed how the views are shown. And then they they don't... they didn't One hand isn't washing the other one. So they don't know that the people who... Excuse me. The people who do the logarithm and set up the search results aren't talking to the people who remove the view, so they don't know that the view count was used to use to judge whether they needed to show your item. If you're getting no views on stuff, why would eBay want to show it? And if they were before they the change, they were the views included stuff that wasn't technically from what eBay is saying real views. So, but those those non-real views were counting towards the whatever criteria eBay came up with to show your items. And if they're not doing that because of that, well, that's what's, that's what's going on. That's my opinion because they run stuff and they release stuff and they push out updates without checking out whether it crashes something else all the time. And I think that's literally what it is. I don't know if they'll ever fix it. I don't know if they're ever bright enough to fix it. That's, the, that's my concern. Um, Emily Stepik, 
credit where credit is due. I love the green repeat buyer. I don't know if it's green, but if you're talking about the eBay repeat buyer, I do like that myself. That is one of the best things they have added on at least because I try to reach out to people and that does help. And I'll do give better discounts when I know they've bought from me. One thing I would tell you too, if you've got repeat buyers, try and remember their name without even having to worry about that. Uh, that's I, I try to know them, try to talk to them. Say, hey, I know you've bought a lot. If you're interested, if you, if you see that they're a repeat, email them. Say, hey, if you I see you buy a lot, I give group discounts. I'll be happy to combine a bunch of orders free and ship in one package at the end of a week or something. Offer them something. You've got uh, if you're not doing that, you're just leaving stuff on the table again. I'm, too many people don't do stuff like that. Yeah, that is one of the best things I think they've added. Vintage uh, Dust by George G. How are you doing? Just uh, beginning to build up online sales. It will take you time. Eric Hughes. Yeah, whatnot is not for everyone. I'm. If my son wouldn't have wanted to do it, I don't know if I would have done it at all, honestly, to be honest. Because I'm not a. I'm glad that they added the ability to do most all of it through OBS. I use OBS. I'm using it right now. That's what it's going to be. I'm not going to use my phone to broadcast it. The only, the biggest complaint I have is that the only way to upload a preview is on your phone. And I hate phone apps, so I'm, I'm, I'm not a big fan of that. I'm glad you can add all your items from, from your PC or laptop, which is great. If I don't like it, I told them too. He says, well, how many do you plan on doing it? I, I told the guy, it depends on how it goes. I said, if it doesn't go well, I'm not going to waste my time doing them. So again, you know, I tried to pick better items like they suggested. I've tried to follow the whatever's. I'm just, I, I just, I don't know if it's going to be me or not. I may not be my thing. I don't know. Mark uh, Pinkston. Yeah, you can't please everyone. That's for sure. Hollywood reseller, I tried whatnot, but the traffic was not there for me. I've heard that there's more and more people on there. It's it's hard to say. I I, I I don't know if it's good or bad on that aspect of it yet. I don't know. So I said if it doesn't go well, you know, who knows? I, I won't do it again. I'm not gonna waste time if I'm not making money on it. Question has your external site views dropped off in the past eight days? Go check. Um, I would recommend, I check stuff like that occasionally, but I haven't even bought, I don't mess with that because my sales are still there. So I don't see a big, huge issue in my book. They're a little slower, but we've run a little higher sale and then that's fixed the issue. But, um, that would not, that wouldn't play well. That's not going to be able to give you any information if your, your off platforms of views dropped in my book, just because of the way eBay interacts with, with Chrome. I don't I don't I can't say that that that's going to make a big difference. I can't say that those numbers are eBay's fault or anything. There's no way to judge on on what that is. There's no baseline to compare it to is the problem with checking it. That's why I don't even look at my views anymore. Views are re irrelevant. They don't sell anything for me. A view I don't honestly I couldn't tell you view counts on anything. I don't know my click through rate on eBay or nothing because again it means nothing to me. If I if I'm selling uh, the same amount every day, I don't care what the view count is. It, it means nothing. It's, it's, it's irrelevant. Unless somebody's going to buy it, that's all that matters. And whether I sell 10 items or 50 items, if the, the money's there, I, again, I don't, it doesn't matter to me. It's, just, it's, it's more time occupied worrying about something like that to me than anything else. Quantity is, is your best bet, your best wager against slow sales quantity and with the prices that ebay's dropped the, the store levels to the fees and all that stuff too there's no reason not to keep putting stuff up to never take it down and just build a bunch of stuff up there if you can't find new items to list right now you should be going through your old inventory and fixing photos fixing keywords making sure you have the right category making sure ebay hasn't changed something on you fill in the recommended sell similar or recommended um, item specifics we've been doing some every single week i've been talking to uh, one of my patrons back and forth he's knocked off thousands of them more than i can at this point but i think that does help somewhat to um again if you're going to look at your views that might discourage you and that's not a, a view count means nothing when it comes to sales you just need the right person online at the right time and off you go i hope Let's see where we're at. Um, 
Well, thank you very kindly, Auction Monkey. I'm sorry if, if I missed that until just now. Thank you for the super chat, $10 super chat. I didn't pop up on here or I was yapping too much. I do honestly appreciate that, though. Uh, let's see here. Have you learned a lot from your video? I have learned a lot. Well, thank you very kindly, Vintage uh, Dust by George G. Uh, it's possible that there is something seriously wrong with view count and just being given a quick response on it being normal is something new. They changed how the view counts show up. They removed all those supposedly fake ones. Just like the Twitter issue with all the bots. There's Apparently eBay is saying that there's bots all over and a good chunk of the views that you may have gotten in the past were bots. Again, that's that's why I I personally uh, correlate, and I can't prove it, but I'm 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 like 92% there that when they got rid of the view count, they didn't adjust the logarithm for the search results, because the logarithm was based on how many views you're getting that. And if it's got a lot of views, it's going to be a hotter item, and then hence hopefully more watchers, and hence it would rank higher on a search result. Again, that's only for eBay's best match. If anybody clicks anything, once the search result shows up for you and changes it off of best match, it's all based on whatever you're clicking. It's based on oldest to newest, newest to oldest, highest to lowest, lowest to highest. It doesn't matter at all from that point. The only search results that eBay is steering you towards is only the first search results you get. And most people these days, if they're trying to find something, they're going to search from lowest to highest. So... Any of the logarithm that eBay is doing is gone out the window the minute somebody clicks and changes the search results to a different setting, whether it's highest, lowest, lowest, to highest. I've shown it. That You can test it yourself. All that, So all that promoted listings that all the people are saying are getting you all that money aren't doing what it says they're doing in my book because the minute somebody changes that search result and there's a million ways you can change it there's only one way though that ebay steers them with your promoted listings and it's instantly bypassed and gone the minute you click oldest to newest newest to oldest highest to lowest it's all gone so they're, they're, the people may not be there for what you're selling possibly too because of all the other platforms i hate to be the bearer of bad news but clothing is is flooded Clothe, all the clothing that's backed up overseas because of the pandemic is still sitting there. There's going to be, I'm not saying clothing is not going to be sellable, but man, everybody that I know is, that sells clothing is having a hard time right now. Having a hard time right now. We're still still selling thousands a week, so I'm not, I, I, I don't have the issue, but I've got quantity. I've got, just on the store I share with you, like over 30,000, 33,000 items or something. That's not counting the other platforms and the other stores that we do have. So without quantity, I don't know where I would be in sales. Uh, it doesn't cost me any different whether I've got 30,000 or, or 2,000 items. So why would I, I, I just keep listing everything. That That's end of story. You know, when you list stuff, you do sell stuff. Uh, Mark Pinkston, um, cross-listing, we do Discogs, Amazon, and um, eBay for records. And they each have their own basis for what sells best on what site. High-value high, high value records like a Northern Soul would go on eBay without a doubt first. Um, a high-valued, well-known, well-sought-after 78 that's pre-war jazz would go on Amazon and eBay. They would sell for more on Amazon. There's more of a base of people that look. Discogs is the biggest platform for selling records on the globe. So mid-range and lower value records sell like mad. And you on Discogs, you can set it up so they have to buy $10 worth or $20 worth just to get an order place. So you can list records for 3 bucks, and you won't have to worry about just shipping out a $3 record. You don't have to take a photo for the records on Discogs. It's quick. It's easy. If the record's already listed up there, it's a se at seconds. You can list hundreds of records in, in a very quick time, an hour or so. I mean, it's it's a phenomenally quick process to list records on Discogs. That's why you can afford to sell cheaper ones just set a minimum purchase value. They have to buy so much money worth of records to be able to get an order sent to them. Off you go. It works because they don't. they're paying one shipping cost. They're saving. They're getting a bunch of cheap records. We're talking I paid... Five cents, two cents for a record that I can sell for three to four bucks without a photo. Uh, part of the part of the appeal, I guess, with whatnot is I don't have to list anything. I could just turn on an auction, do a, a video, thirty second preview, start an auction the next day, and type in the item as I'm as I'm wanting to auction it. 
Record number one. I'm done. That's my whole description, and I show the record. That's lot number one. That's all you got to do. So I'm trying it for speed, I guess, and I've got so much inventory, I'm not going to worry about the other aspects of it. If it flips, it ships. Yes, I will pay $100 for a vintage two-inch tall all-black Weeble. All black. It has to be all black. That is one of the ones I know exists. I've seen it. Um, haven't been able to acquire one. They're fairly scarce. They're, they're prototypes that were, weren't released. It's the Invisible Man prototype is what it is. Um... Yeah, I got a whole box of He-Man here, honestly. I just picked up He-Man not too long ago. B8N2U. Interesting name. Just picked up 1960s Mattel Man in Space Space Station. Is it Mattel Man in Space or is it a Major Matt Madison? Um, that's probably what I'm thinking, maybe. Velvet Underground, that's what it is, Record Crate. Yeah, sometimes my brain. There's one of those that sold for like $100,000. What about the small box sets, 45s like Doris Day, Harry James? Not worth much, hardly at all. Unless they're in mint, unplayed condition, you might get 10 or 15 bucks for either one of those. In mint, unplayed condition. Now, like a Doris Day or Harry James uh, jukebox, uh, compact jukebox, single, well, that's not a single, it'd be, it's, a, it's a compact 33. Some of those can be worth good money. And they were issued in a mini LP set. So it'll be the whole set of records, the whole set of songs for an entire LP or gatefold set, but they'll be issued on compact 7-inch 33s. The Elvis ones are worth a fortune, like the stereo compact 33 7-inchers from Elvis. There's a couple that are worth like a thousand bucks on those. Not that you're going to find them. Porter Wagner, no. Definitely not. I can't think of a Porter Wagner that's worth really even messing with, truthfully. What about Beanie Babies? Nope. A hundred for thirty bucks, you'll probably make a little money, maybe. You can probably break them up in sets if you've got about a hundred Beanie Babies for thirty. I would, I don't buy Beanie Babies at all. I mean, the only ones I've ever sold were the first. I think there was a Canadian set or something like McDonald's set or something we had. It's been years, fifteen years or better. Do I collect? I do sell book. You're talking about like. Um, um, like the 3M board games. Um, I can't think of the name of it. The bookshelf games is what I call them. 3M, I think, is one of the main brands. Yes. I've had dozens and dozens. I probably have two or three here right now. Um, I know I've got two or three here right now, but um, they're about yay big, and they're usually little square pieces. And Anyway, it's all cardboard and stuff, the, one, the book bookshelf type games. Yes, I do sell those. I've, I think I even have some in a video, a couple videos probably. Stardust Memories. Do I need to get autographs authenticated? I have. I have. PSAs. Um, I've sent some off. I've got um, Frederick Dent Grant's autographs all sorted. Um, uh, Porter, Admiral Porter's autographs all sorted. Uh, Dent, uh, Frederick Dent Grant is Ulysses S. Grant's son. He was a general as well, too. He was on the battlefield in 1864-65 as a kid. So um, there's, a, there's a whole record of him charging onto the battlefield uh, as like a nine or ten year old and during civil, during the Civil War. Anyway, I sidetracked there, but uh, I get some done. Mine was Led Zeppelin. I wished I didn't even know who Led Zeppelin was until I was my I was sheltered because my parents wouldn't let me listen to certain things. My mom was fairly religious. I'm gonna let it go here. I know we're running the hour and a half mark, but um, I was sheltered. I I was hanging out. I was maybe 15, and we were driving somewhere. There's a place around here when I was a kid called Motorhead. There used to be a food town there, and um, Godfather's Pizza, and there's still a McDonald's over there. But um, it used to be a plaza. People would just go in a big circle and hang out, just a cruise. People would be drinking and smoking pot and all that kind of stuff there, and. I asked, hey, I want to go there. And that's the first time I ever heard Led Zeppelin when I was 15. And I'm like, this isn't heavy. My mom said, that's too heavy and all this kind of stuff. And um, my mom would turn off Saturday Night Live if she wouldn't let me watch that even when I was a kid. So anyway, I love Led Zeppelin. I own everything probably that Led Zeppelin's done, at least the standard, what, 11 albums, I think it is. I've got the CD uh, set. We we copied it, and then I got rid of the set, but I've, I might even have one still around here, but I've got the entire um, discography. I've, I used to have all their records, but I, I don't keep most records these days. I just do MP3s. 
Um, just because I've got so much uh, records and I've added space as a killer. Um, Stephen Holden. I have, at, when I was seven, uh, my father gave me his uh, stamp collection. I was a, a Cub Scout back then, and I was the, I was the Boy Scout um, uh, stamp collecting merit badge coordinator at one time back in the day. Um, I had that merit badge to myself, but I've been into stamps for years and years. I love the earlier stamps. Um, Columbian Exposition is the one set that I've always wanted. Every one, I'm missing the five and the the two dollar. I think is the only two I'm technically missing, unused, near mint, uh, orig OG original gum. Um, and I finally, finally got all the Zeppelin. The three sat in, in blocks of four, mint, unhinged. But anyway, I use a stamp perforation gauge. I have a great collection. Yeah, I've got a bunch of the. In fact, I, I've probably, I got a rotary press gauge and stuff. I got boxes of the gauges. We bought a, a pallet or, or more of stamp supplies and stamp. I used to have all the supplements. I had like 4,000 supplements for all the Harrisons, all the, the major expensive books, whites, all of them. And um, we sold thousands of supplements on eBay. I, just thousands of them. I, I mean, we took trips. I filled up my van back in the day. I don't know how many times to get that pallets of stuff home. But I've got gauges beyond belief. I've probably got a couple hundred of them. NOS and boxes still. I need to break out some of that stuff. But um, I don't have vintage uh, Vani with the box. It depends on the version you're talking about on, on Harry James boxes. I don't sell the 45s for very much money, um, in all honesty, unless they're mint, mint, mint or something, or it's Jump and Jive or something, Beat Me Daddy, Eight to the Bar, something like that may sell better with him. I do better with the Andrew sisters, if you're talking about that time frame. Benny Goodman, um, Glenn Miller. I buy most every Glenn Miller I get, and I've got a buyer for every Glenn Miller, pretty much. Um, I would go more that route, personally. Uh, here's somebody, Record Crate, Charles Lowe, Cold Fact, uh, Porter Wagner, and any Dolly Parton with Porter are desirable. See, I'd buy Dolly Parton. If it had Dolly Parton, I'd probably nab him up, because a lot of Dolly Parton sells fairly well. She's a very well-liked person. Chicago Lady, good evening. Yeah, I got a lot of stamp albums. I mean, I might have more than 70 at least. Most of them, I mean, I've got my stamp albums, and then I've got all the ones that we bought. I, I don't list stamps anymore at all. I haven't listed stamps in like 8 or 10 years. I just buy them, and they sit there. I figure when I retire, I'll just, I'll just be a stamp dealer specifically probably because I won't have any carrying around. It'll be easy. I'll have millions of stamps, you know, at that point, you know. Uh, yeah, Vertigo is a very nice label. I've, in fact, I recorded it spinning so you can see it for a video once before. Uh, Lead Belly's first forty fives. I don't think so. I've got, I've got four or five boxes over here that I boxed up. There's probably 3,000 hand-picked 45s that are either R&B, Soul, or Garage, Lounge. There might be some rock in there, too, but they were all hand-picked by me like 15 years ago. And they've been boxed up ever since in storage. And when we moved, they've, they've come over here. I haven't opened those boxes in 15 years. No, no lie, no exaggeration. So there might be some really good stuff in there. I've just got so much, and we still get stuff in that... You know, do I look here? Do I get the stuff that just comes in? That's again why we're going to start auctioning some off. Um, psychedelic records I do fairly well with too. Don't get me wrong, but I don't run a the 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 fight around here is horrendous. The the I would have to be showing up the night before and pissing people off to get all the good records around here, because. Damned if I go out to the sale and I'm the first one at the at a garage sale, years I don't haven't done it because this always happens. If I'm the first one there the day of the sale, someone was there the night before, like 95% of the time in this city, and it's the same a holes that do it, and they know what they're doing. They act like oh I didn't know it was I thought it was today, and they'll they'll drive by sometimes even in the morning the day before while they're setting it up, 
and that that just ticks me. I'm, I can't do that. I'm, I'd never do that. I gave up even trying to do it. Let them play their little games. I'm I'm not gonna stress out or try to show up and piss people off and stuff like that. I I, I that's not me. I gave up on all that. 78s I do phenomenally well in. Any I do well in any, most foreign 78s. Chinese 78s and Japanese ones I do very well with. Um, Japanese Ramba I've sold probably 50 copies of on a on a Singapore not Singapore on a um, Nippon RCA Victor label, you know, and it's like a 30s pre-war Japanese Ramba. But and I've got Sandman by them too that I got by. Um, uh, Paul Whiteman, very good name too. Uh, one of the walls of Raleigh stores covered with whipped cream and other delights, including parodies. Love research. I love old records and just in general. Uh, let's see here. Neville W, well, good to have you in-house. South Australia, huh? I've got quite a few other folks from Australia that pop in. Yeah, we're going to let it go in just a minute here. Let's see if I can get through some more names with any other questions. I just turned in. I'm a total novice with what is reel-to-reel -reel and how does it work. Reel-to-reels are the predecessors to cassette tapes, basically. They're open reels. I'm, uh, I don't have any setting around here that I know of. It, it looks like... Um, eight millimeter film basically but it's a reel to reel it's just magnetic tape it's sound very fine quality uh... two cases of focus 21 splash I'm not sure what that is uh... what is your turntable Don? well I've got a bunch of turntables Yeah, I couldn't give you all that information right now. I wouldn't. I'd have to look them up. Old Jerry Vale records right now. I'm not. I'm not a nut. I don't want to say it the wrong way. I'm not. I don't mind having the pops and the little cracks, crackles in in records. Truthfully, when I'm listening to them, I'll tell you why. Because that's how I grew up. I grew up on that stuff, so I don't buy high-end. I mean, my I got master what are M and H headphones. That's like the most expensive headphones I bought. I, I don't buy the most expensive. My most expensive piece is a Valtronic Laser record player. I think it's Valtronic, and that's like the most expensive thing I got. And the only reason I bought that, I bought it used for like thirty-five hundred dollars. The only reason I bought that was because of the 78s. Most of the 78s that I buy, I've got a a person that will buy a good copy off. And I can run the the laser on the side of a track. So even if the, the disc plays pretty crappy with a needle, the laser will pick it up from the side and it eliminates a lot of that stuff. So I will sell... Uh, burn mp3s of stuff that's in the public domain and people will hash it out and they, they'll do stuff with it. I've done that for years and years and years. I've had the, the laser player or laser record player for seven, eight years, maybe more than that. Uh, Dio Sabbath, yep. Hey Brandon, how are you doing? Acquired 160 plus German World War II tobacco cards. Some amazing pictures, even shows of Nazi stuff and Nazis who were. You can sell some of those on eBay. That's an iffy one. Uh, you're allowed to sell like stamps and postcards and things like that. Most of those sets, though, even if they're complete, 30, 40 bucks. I turn those down even when you could sell those on eBay without any issues. I would take them to a local military show and just sell them if I was you and just get rid of them that way. That's where I sell them if I run into them dirt cheap. But most sets these days, the, the most of those card sets are like 240 um, cards. And they have to be complete to even garner 30 or 40 bucks. They were mass produced. Tons of those are produced. So they're, they're nowhere near rare at all. I turned down like 20 of those books not too long ago. From one of my pickers too, and he was a little irked that I, he thought he was doing me a favor by buying them, but he he wanted what they were worth, and I can't. How how the heck could I pay that? He thought he was gonna get so much more because there were so many cards there. He was thinking a dollar a card, but 
you can't pay that for those. Those are, yeah. I would take them to a local military show. Around here, there's two or three that I could go to within a 30-minute drive or 40-minute drive. That's what I do. If I get a bunch of stuff I can't sell, like the, uh, the, the manuals, military manuals, just sell those at a local military show. You won't get what you would have got on eBay, but you can't sell them on eBay. You can get dinged. They'll pull you down. Those are banned items on eBay. Whether they're legal to sell or not, eBay has banned them. So that's one of those things. That's That would be my personal suggestion. Always store records standing up. You always want them. I don't store any flat except when I'm showing them like that, but always store them standing up. I bag them and seal them usually if there's something I'm keeping. Oh, was a Trixie. So that's probably the Trixie doll that I've seen recently. I watched Emergency. I, yeah, I used to watch Emergency. Geez, my parents loved that show. I can't remember the two main actors, but I, one of them had a mustache, and the other was the blonde guy with clean shaven face. I used to watch. I had a lunchbox for that at one time. Um, I think they have uh, prototype trading cards by Top Stop for that too, if I'm not mistaken. I have the the uh, Viewmaster from Emergency. Um, to, uh, wasn't it Emergency One? Wasn't that the name of it, or was it just Emergency? I can't remember. Auction Monkey. That's an interesting record. My best record sales-wise was Tommy and the Derbies um, on Swing. And that one, the last copy, I had three copies. The last one I sold for $4,200. And that's a 45 no sleeve. And that was in VG Plus condition on both sides. Um, Handy Andy was on one side of that one. Um, hey, Matt, MSG's Treasure, how you doing? Winter Crow, how to see you? Good to see you in house. Yeah, I'm probably way behind. Greetings from Connecticut. Post Road Photos, how are you doing? MS, why does whatnot even have a say on how you ship an item? What a joke. The dollar per extra item's fine. I don't know. I think they got a deal. I don't know. I don't have no idea why they set it up that way. Um, but they, you just print the labels from them and you're done. So, I mean, it's all a done deal. You don't have to argue or anything else like that, I guess, is the point. Uh, yeah, we've got a lot of repeat business. I love repeat customers, so I always give out deals. I always try to contact them if they, they shop a couple times. Pin the tail of the donkey, very common decor and more. I doubt that's worth a ton of money. Yeah, we better run. I'm already 10 minutes past what I keep saying. I have Fisher Decor, more Fisher Price uh, people and uh, little people in bus and train zoo. Are they valuable? They're worth some money. Well, the vinyl plastic ones, different. They, the wood ones are always better, I think. Yeah, Auction Monkey. I'm not a big phone app person. Uh, I watched Adam 12. I watched that show. Found a five pack of Cuban cigars from 19. Anyone know? Can't sell them. It's against the law. You cannot sell Cuban cigars. That could get you a federal charge. So don't do it. Don't sell them. Don't list them. You might be able to sell it locally, but I would be very, very careful on that. We sell old military manuals at our auction. Good money and a lot less issues. Yeah, don't sell them on eBay. Don't sell them on eBay. Yeah, I want to say I do remember a cartoon from back in the day. I have many 1950s photograph postcards from Montana, Wyoming, rodeos, awesome action shots. Some of those are worth money, but a lot of those are mass-produced. Yeah, and if you haven't hit the thumbs up, please hit the thumbs up. Just give me a few more to hit 100 would be great. Can't do it, can't do it. I know I forgot to put out the show. We were trying to catch up on everything else. Even if you're not literally reselling there's always something to do as a reseller i never get a break unless i want or need a break i never i, I could work all day long every day and not get everything done uh, that's just the the breaks uh anyway if you played ozzy's song Suis of course uh well the backward stuff yeah i don't know about all that um i played every ozzy song probably there is i like quite a few of them to say the least but i was a long-haired heavy metal uh, headbanger back in the day did you see an increase in QI stuff sell during the Jubilees? Welcome, Swamp Pit. Yeah, my my 
Pogs are not worth much money these days. Most pogs have fallen off the, the, the map. I'm going to end it here. I could go on all day. Uh, again, uh, let's end it off here. I do appreciate everybody coming on. Again, if you haven't hit the like button, please slam that thumbs up down or thumbs up for us down there. Video out tomorrow. I think I will just discuss views and stuff tomorrow's video. We'll put that one out. Uh, Patreon, you already have video done. You've got another one that's probably processed already, so you may see two tomorrow. Uh, either way, you'll have at least another one up on Sunday as well as that other one. So I think there'll be three this week for Patreons. Uh, so anyway, we'll let it go. Hopefully everybody got at least something out of the video. I know I ramble a lot, but that's just me. Appreciate everybody for coming on. Thanks again, Auction Monkey, for the $10 super chat, and I hope you all have a good evening.